Hello, we're gonna make a watercolor with the following pigments burnt sienna, raw sienna, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, Taylor blue or primary blue, Hukum Boach, Kumikut, Ellison Crimson, and raw umber. And real winter color. This is the watercolor we're gonna make. Uh, it is in uh, Provincie Drenthe, uh, the county of Drenthe. Uh, it's white there. In the south is also white. We, where I live in the north, uh, we have just a little bit of snow. But it is very inspiring, that's why we are going to make this wind landscape. I hope you like uh, to do one. When the sky is wet and you put down the distant trees, they evaporate in the, in the wetness and therefore it is important to uh, use fresh color fresh squeezed out pigments on your palette. I have here uh, my usual, what I always use. I have also a, a, a colder version. I use not so much and I have a warm version with sepia and uh, yellow ochre. So also on Dalarani there, Dalarani raw sienna, but it is in really in reality a mix from Mars red and some yellow. I could do a video about that. Here's my palette. So we squeeze out. Wrong color, this is raw sienna and I have to do burnt sienna. Well that happens. I flip it out, flip it in the right direction. Wet tissue tissue. Uh, I, I could see it, but this, this is raw sienna. But my mirror is all, all one pigment, so you never get mud. Just squeeze out a little bit. A little bit of watercolor goes a long way. This is burnt umber. And then we need the real winter color burnt or raw umber. I don't use it much, but it is really a nice color. Also to make greens with Taylor Blue. It's a little bit earthy than for example raw sienna of or well the blues I have enough blue. I think I use only the ultramarine blue. I shall spray it. It's just clean water. I spray it well because you never know. The warm blues are on the side of the reds, and the cool blues are on the side of the, the browns or earth colors. 
Okay, we gonna make a sketch. The paper is a quarter sheet. It's a quarter sheet of Pogging Fort, 250 laps or 535 grams. Really heavy. It's one of my favorite painters, uh, papers. Favorite painters uh, are Zigo and uh, Wesson, but you know that. I look where the horizon is. And we put it in. Not a straight line, of course. On Earth there are uh, not very much straight lines. Only man-made built things are straight lines. The roof of the first farm. I use a heavy pencil or heavy dark. It's 4B from Lira. Then I make another building. Don't uh, sketch too precise, because you have the tendency to yeah, to fill all in, like painting by numbers. Too neat. Nothing wrong with too neat, because you have painters uh, that do very precise work and uh, their work is really beautiful but I'm not after that I like loose work as you see I make a big set the the white farms the or the white roof farms are a bit the focal point I do a farm on the left side too, and there comes a tree on the left, a big tree, with the part of snow in the, between the branches. And in the front is a hedge, and it's not a closed hedge, but there is a cap in it sort of gate that you can uh, go in into the painting I did the Dutch version uh, too from this but if you are Dutch watch the Dutch and if you are English well, you can learn Dutch, but <laughs> it's not a, f a thing that is easy. So I painted this and I make my comments or synchronization later. It's not easy either, but all things we must have to learn. I use uh, two flats, one and a half inch and a three quarter inch for the details. I wet the tops from the roofs, and now I wet the sides of the paper. I wet the sides of the paper because uh, I learned it that way. It's easier. Around the buildings and some in the middle. You will see I paint something in the middle 
that it is not clear what what it is. These are Princeton modelers. I have these brushes for two years now and, and they stay uh, remarkably good. Far better than uh, real air. make a color now on the left uh, side of the sky I make it lighter blue and the other side I make a mix from the same blue but with a bit of Alice Rinder in it so it gets a bit purple ultramarine blue pure And you see it is Bockingford, so the the water and the, the pigment stay a bit on top. And when you're not used to that, it could be strange, but I paint so long on Bockingford, maybe 30 years, and it's just a wonderful paper. If Princeton had bigger brushes, I used a bigger brush even for this. You can make a sky with a 3 inch brush, 2 inch brush, or like this, and uh, 1 and 3 quarters, 1 and a half. Uh, you notice this is far warmer. It's just to make a uh, gradation in the sky. make one sky color that, that can be pouring. You see I uh, spare out all, all sorts of whites in the middle. With a smaller brush. I can cut out uh, the, the farms a bit better. This is uh, pure water. It's very wet all, uh, everything. My board is also not on an angle. It's laying flat on my work table. I know painters uh, paint a lot on an angle or straight or 30 degrees, but I paint just what I uh, need. When I need a uh, gradated sky, I paint in an angle, but I cannot hold it with my hand. But I have also an easel that can. Uh, do that. Okay, my biggest brush, number 16 round. I know there are 20 uh, brushes, but not in Europe, only in the USA. We go in with raw umber, nice earthy. I had a bit of burnt umber with it, with a bit of ultramarine. A 
but it doesn't matter very much here. Just make it nice and not all all the same color. But because that is this is a focal point, I do a bit of burn sienna. It's a bit red and warm and that attracts the eye most of the time. On the side of the building, the farm. I need a rack. With a rough texture because of the snow. This is a bit too hard there. I make it softer. Some things you learn uh, along the way, like on the right side, it, it was too hard and you don't want hard edges on the side of your paper, only soft. And is it something you can learn? Yeah, of course you can learn. But it takes a while. Here I make something I don't know what it is and I like if you were to see or to look there and think oh that is a bunch of I don't know what but there is something there and this is exactly what I paint here This is always tricky. The sky is wet and I want soft trees in the background because soft means they are far away. You can do soft and you uh, I I could do hard ones with uh, blue or a violet or blue for warm violet or a cool blue but I chose here for a soft texture and watercolor is famous for its soft texture you see some underside of a farm don't need much just the line not straight never make straight lines or try to, not to make straight lines. Well, it's going okay. And try to paint as long as you want or can. I make some green there soft for the variety and it is a warm green I make that from a Talo blue or primary blue the 400 you saw in the beginning and I uh, add to that uh, burnt umber or burnt sienna Also make sure you get a variety of brush strokes there, not all the same, because all the same looks boring. A 
like this uh, there is one row of green things there but yeah I make two not on purpose but uh, well some things happen put your brush on the paper and there it goes and it is not a, a mistake it's not failing just live with it does it look wrong or is someone going to look there if there are two rows or one row I don't treat it as a mistake and when you do you make no mistakes easier said than done because we all have backgrounds but things like uh, the wrong color doesn't exist here I try to make a variety in in this yeah it's a sort of ditch behind farmland farmland just make something nicer from it I'm going to do the the hatch it's a very neat clipped pruned hatch and it's perfectly straight but I don't mind make that hatch so straight as it is I even leave a cap in the middle so that you can walk through the gate as it, as it were, were and uh, walk to the, the farm as a tester it's for me something too blue it needs a bit of earthy a bit of burnt umber now it's better I'm painting with the side of the brush so you get a broken effect now I, I add some earth colors a bit of variety in the edge I know painters like David Curtis he's famous for that every centimeter every he changed the colors not much but just enough to make it glow or interesting other side when I paint this watercolor or hatch 60 times more I have 60 different hatches so don't try to copy the exact hatch because I can't either but you have to watch out the top of the hatch must be interesting but now it's snow it has to be like if the hatch is standing in snow so you have to worry about two things at the same time but with a broken edge you all are always safe with winters because snow I learned that from Tony van Hesselt snow is two things a rough edge or a soft edge the same is for water rough or soft that that says water and the number eight rigger long rigger nice rigger is that i make some interesting things
here's where I want you to look. I don't make it on the left side there because I don't want you to look there. Well, you, you have to make it. You can look there, but I don't make it interesting enough. Well, a line in the back, also a broken line because we are making snow. A hard line doesn't say snow there. But in the past I did hard lines and I made them from raw sienna and a bit of blue. An interesting line. But Rof says it better. The house color here is raw sienna and a bit of uh, new Cambodge. And you see it's immediately it is stands out because it is a bright color. I wiped it away because I thought, oh there, it's too much. When you paint as long as I do, you see a stop sign when something like that happened. Because we all see it. When we finish a watercolor and we look at it again and we all can see oh that was wrong and I want to do that better the next time. Well I have the same after 80 to, uh, almost 40 years of painting. I make never a perfect watercolor and I don't want to. But as soon as it is perfect I am worrying I stop then we always seek for the for the better I painted this scene before the hatch I'm very happy with the hatch, but the tree I corner paint in was so much better in the first one. But yeah, what can you do about it? This is uh, ultramarine blue and uh, a little bit of Alger and crimson, just enough to make it not so uh, fiery, so blue. I tone it down a bit. I always do that. I tone down, like I make a, a sky, I, I take ultramarine blue and a bit of burnt sienna. And when I take burnt sienna, I put a little bit ultramarine blue in it. So you don't paint with tube colors, but also for a more harmonious painting, you bring the colors together. Well, we paint now 20 minutes and still we are in the same watercolor. Not stopped yet. And sometimes you have bleeding into another color, but it is the charm of watercolor. Live on the edge. Now I have to dry it. It's dry now. There are some pencil lines. I 
I move them because the white roofs stand out very much and the pencil line is a bit disturbing in that Uh, a few rounds, a rigger, very small rigger. We're gonna make the tree with those. Let's look at the palette. Here I have green, and that is uh, Talo blue in earth colors, burnt umber, burnt sienna, and it's a dark green. But when I add uh, yellow to it, it's going to be a light green. So always look on your palette and change the color. And don't think it get I get mud. Because when you choose the right colors with the single pigments, you almost never get mud. See, this is the same green, light green with a bit of yellow. I make the tree here. The other side from the tree I make a bit darker. And it's not green, but the burnt umber. The raw umber and the burnt sienna section I have there. And then I mix an uh, ultramarine blue and a burnt umber for a really dark edge to the tree. When you look at trees, they never are brown or dark grey, they always are green on one side and that is usually the, the north side. All sorts of lichen and, and I don't know, uh, the mushrooms all also grey, uh, grow on the, the north side. I make a branch here and it looks very dark, but it is very wet. I take it down a bit and you see it is immediately, immediately, oh English is so difficult for me. Here I try also with, with a big brush. I have to hold it a bit higher. Now I hold it with a furl for very precise details, but it doesn't have to be detailed at all. But when you do a demo, it's, it's always different. Well, right choice, smaller brush. From other brands you have those brushes with, uh, with a thick squirrel around a, a sable rigger. That is something uh, Princeton is missing in his in his uh, collection. It would be nice, but in general, I like the look of that that green on the underside and the dark on the on the tree.
This is a rigger number eight, a long rigger. I'll make a dark mix for the other side. And here I paint over the farm in behind so that the farm is pushed backwards even more. And when the trunk from the tree is still wet, I can go into it with a dark color and, and, and it blends together. Well, normally I do this and I turn my paper. But, well, for the movie. I keep it one way straight. Maybe later when I have more followers I can buy, buy better equipment and uh, go picture in picture uh, with a second camera. I. Uh, Fill my uh, pellet for mixing into the right corner or something like that. I go wrong here a bit, but ah, it's too thick in the top, so I decide to make the tree even bigger heavier on the other side. I think I have to stop in a moment because it's otherwise it gets very detailed there. And it attracts way too much attention. But it's there now, so I'm happy with it. Maybe some leaves. Mm, I'm not sure. Well, let me look what to do. I think it's time to make the. How do you say that? We say. Pollard, Pollard Willows are they? When you let them grow, they, they get high as 20 feet or 20 meters uh, even. But every two years they take the, the branches down and they get a big head on top. Well, what to do next? <laughs> well, another, another pollard willow. I make not the perfect pollard willow here. I have paintings that, that, uh, that they are the, the main event in the, that picture, but here they are just uh, how do you say that? Things that are there. It fills the watercolor up. And of course they were there in the landscape too. Otherwise I'd, I didn't do it. There is some kind of meadow surrounded with pollard willows and also poles. I do the poles later but the wire I leave out because uh, it's so small and far away.
another pollard willow what can I say it is just grey ultramarine blue and burnt umber of burnt sienna pollard willow with a chai side shoot you see that often Maybe in my next uh, video I can make one or two when they are uh, really the main event, the the focal point of the painting. I did that once more a few years back. I don't know if you all look to my old paintings. Some are not wonderful, uh, I didn't have a good camera back then. But I, I, I filmed with uh, my cheap Samsung telephone and a friend of mine said, you cannot longer do that, I have a camera for you and you may keep it. So it was very generous of him and I'm still happy with it. I'm doing now all sorts of things that the uh, watercolor asks for. A bit of dark here, a bit of there, there and uh, not really a plan. I see it and I, I do it. It's painting by intuition. You learn that it takes a while before you see that the same blue as I did in the on the land I do on the roofs. Here I make a shadow color on the left side while it is on the tree on the right side. Is that a problem? I don't think so, but it is something for the next time you uh, uh, you, you place the sun on the right side, so you will remind yourself, hey, watch out, that is not the zero side. But now I. Yeah, I formed the, the, the buildings a bit that they look more like buildings. See, I... get lost now from the big part of the roof there, with the tissue. I try now to make the shadows on the side of the, the yellow building. But the pollard wi wi uh, willow is still wet, so I should have waited a bit under the roof edge, a few windows, and a door. Don't make it too fancy, it's far away. From that distance you don't see the doorbell or uh, something like that. It was too dark line so I removed it. It's just a stop sign. Stop, it's not good. And now I make this even a shadow on the other side. Oh well, uh, it's become a nice painting. Bit of rough texture on the, the big white roof, because otherwise it is so white. And make it blue, because blue 
always have something that it is in the distance. So I make some poles. Make them not the same or the same distance or all, all straight up. Do them quick. Tinder in the distance. So you see, uh, we go to the hatch, we go left and right to the focal point. And not that I planned it this way, it was so on the picture. When I saw appearing it on Facebook, I said to my friend, I want to paint that. And so I did. On the right side, it doesn't look too good for me. It's a bit too empty. It is a bit of a white spot, nothing happening there. So I wet or re-wet the trees. And I try to make a, another building there. It's not on the photo. But the, the watercolor needs it. And when it needs it, we will be making a picture. And if th is this a commission, well, you can do that. Because it has to look like their farm. But now we make a picture, a nice watercolor. And it's better balanced now. I could do also a tree there, but I chose for a, for another building. I decided to go a bit to the left with a row, make another pole. We arrived at the last two minutes of this demo tutorial. I take a bit of titanium white for the pollard willow branches. It makes a bit uh, stand out more. What I there, did there on the big tree, it makes no sense. But okay. You try something and when it works out, it works out. You can never happen or make 100% right watercolor. Well, it could, but now I do one in 50 minutes or 40 instead of months. There are painters that do months on a one watercolor painting. And they are magnificent and wonderful, but I would so boring. I make the roofs, line roof, uh, the roof lines a bit sharper. With the windows in the grey building, not too mu uh, much. And they say when you are looking for some things to do, you are finished. So I think I am finished. Well, let's look with the mount. <laughs> Always a uh, different with the mount. I 
need not to make a new one because this one uh, getting a bit yellow. Well, I sign it. I think it is uh, became a nice picture. Thanks for watching and to the next time. Have a great weekend.